What is it about war games that draws us in? It's sometimes called childish, and for sure kids can play, but really, it's an adult-oriented hobby. I mean, just look at the prices. But unlike a lot of hobbies, this one is full of toys. It's true, model kits take skill and artistry to assemble and paint, but us wargamers, we can't even leave that idea unmemed. We call our models minis, because ours are different. Where other models are recreations of real-world objects, like planes, trains, and automobiles, our models are fiction. Wizards, robots, super soldiers, mechs, floaty tanks. It's a different thing, and it draws those who enjoy a bit of whimsy and playfulness. It's for those of us who like to get away from the real world and into a place of fantasy. Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. I'm a person who gets easily lost in my imagination. In fact, I'm very introverted. I enjoy being social, but the whole being out amongst a living thing I find very draining. And the way I refill my energy bar is by hobbying, alone with my toys, getting lost in the worlds I create. This is an automatic process for me. It's just what my brain does. I don't consciously think about it, my brain just does it. However, recently I got a model that has instantly brought all of this out of my subconscious and onto the painting table for me to examine. It's weird for a little bit of plastic to make me think this much, but this model has taught me a lot about myself. The Thunderhawk Gunship. A little one from Aeronautica Imperialis. This kit made me feel like a kid again. This model, I didn't buy it to play in games. I didn't buy it really for the painting challenge. I bought it so that I could have a little toy on my desk to play with and make zoom zoom noises and recreate the epic adventures of the Adeptus Astartes. This spaceship is a tiny little four and three quarter inch by four inch dropship, absolutely loaded with detail. It's very different from the other Warhammer 40K models I've built. It's much more like a classic airplane model kit, lots of small pieces and a perfectly symmetrical design. I bought this from my local Warhammer store and the manager asked what chapter I was going to paint it as and instantly I said, not Black Templar. Which is a weird thing to say for a Black Templar super fan I know, but I have a love-hate relationship with black armor. It's just a lot harder. Black absorbs light, so it's more difficult to get details to cut through. And my mind immediately went to chapters like White Scars and Imperial Fists. Light colors that'll immediately cut through and make the details pop. But once I got it home and I started imagining my Crusaders loading up and going on adventures, I knew I couldn't betray my chapter like that. No matter what, I have to paint it Black Templars. If that means changing the difficulty from easy mode to hardcore, so be it. I almost never work in sub-assemblies because I often feel like it's a waste of time, but for these missiles and feet, I think it's a good solution and it'll save me time. I broke out the Silly Putty, which is a great tool for masking. It's just sticky enough to stay on the model, but will not pull off any paint when removed. I shoved it into the landing gear leg holes, and I also rolled the putty thin and cut off tiny segments to put over the missile connection points. This all will work together to give me some good connection points when I attach these at the end, but it's important to remember that this took some time, and I have to weigh that time spent against the time I saved during painting. Now with my model prep, you will never guess what color primer I use for this Black Templar Thunderhawk gunship. It's black, which means that this Black Templar Thunderhawk gunship is about 90% done, but it needs a little bit of value, so I'm going to airbrush on a little bit of Stonewall Gray, my favorite color. This gray has a little bit of warmth to it, and that's why I like it so much. I put Vallejo Stonewall Gray into my airbrush and carefully sprayed lines of this all over the edges and overlaps in the armor. This will add some actual value and interest to the armor. Now that it was looking like some kind of weird Tron camo, I knew I was on the right track. I put gunmetal into my engines and you guessed it, the guns. Then it was ready for a washing. I covered the model in one thick layer of Nuln Oil and let it dry. So when you apply a wash, typically it looks fine because you apply it selectively. You put like a yellow wash on the hair, you put a brown wash on the boots. But when you do something very unsubtle, like dunk an entire model in this stuff, you end up with kind of an ugly appearance where you see kind of glossy spots, matte spots, coffee stains but it's very, very subtle and I think I can fix it by giving the model a quick blast of some matte varnish. After a varnish, it was looking matte and all that coffee staining and shiny spots were gone. It was time to do some dry brushing. Now dry brushing is a deceptively challenging technique. I took my brush and wetted the bristles and it's important to have ever so slightly damp bristles so that the paint stays wet and doesn't dry up and turn to dust. I wiped off 98% of the water and then worked the gray paint into the damp bristles. Then I carefully wiped this back and forth over the whole gunship to edge highlight all of the shapes and textures in the armor. And there, black armor with lots of subtle visual interest. The big thing on YouTube right now is to put together, build and paint these giant forge world models. 
And the reason I don't do that, there's two reasons. Number one, I don't have the money. But number two, the real reason is it doesn't look like fun. But the Thunderhawk gunship is the one that tempts me. It's just so cool. It weighs five pounds, it's a foot and a half long, and I would probably take multiple bottles of super glue to keep it assembled. I don't know if you'll ever see a big Forge World build on this channel, but if you do, it'll probably be one of these. I don't just want a jet black spaceship. As cool as the stealth bomber is, the Black Templar are much less covert. I freehanded some Templar symbols on each wing. When freehanding, you want thin paint that is watery so that it flows off the brush easily and has a longer working time. And speaking of sneakiness, I think some red and yellow checkers are in order, and I painted on eight horizontal stripes, then painted over them with black and tried again after my first try of the lines was a mess. Then I did my vertical lines to get this pupper ready for a very long freehanding session. I took red and yellow paint and mixed them with a little bit of gray to desaturate them. Then I started filling in my checkers, first with red and then with yellow, and then back and forth, more red, more yellow until I had everything perfect. Freehanding is a great skill to develop. It's hard, really hard, but once you have it, you will always be able to add anything you want to a mini and not be stuck with whatever was sculpted originally. And speaking of originally, nothing is more original than Eons of Battle Patreon. We have a Miniatures of the Month Club. This month's minis are the Futuristic Elven Warlocks. The STLs are available to our Patreon supporters, and we also have physical 3D prints and lots of high-quality terrain STLs, hosted by comics, games, and things. We also have viewer model critique videos, a weekly hobby hangout live stream, and more. It's the best way to support us, so head on over to Patreon and get access to even more Eons of Battle. We also have merch, link in the description. Whew, a lot of little checkers. But now, with the decorations, it's starting to actually look like something. When it was just black with the highlighting and dry brushing, it was still looking really dull. But now if I can find a few more things to sprinkle on there to jazz it up, I think it'll look really, really slick. So I got to jazzing. Some red racing stripes on the mini wings. I painted the wing flaps white, which contrasted nicely against the black armor. On the windshield, I wanted it to look like the interior was glowing red. So I base coated the windows with a dark red and then used watery red to stipple on lighter and lighter shades. Once I had brought it up to pure red, I did the same thing again with a light red, stippling on less and less paint each time. I think it's looking suitably black Templars. Despite its small size, this has not been a quick paint job. But missiles, and then done. First, I base coated the missile body with gray. A second coat to get full coverage. Then a dark gray on the lower half to add contrast. Then a null oil bath to shade the recesses. Then a coat of red on the missile's tip. Then a dark red shade on the bottom half of the tip and then a line of bright red on the top of the tip. One missile down, five to go, but that took a long time. But I think I've got a way to have the rest of them go much quicker and be painted up much simpler. First, I will zenithal them all, then a watery glaze of bright red, and then some white contrast paint. Boom, missile done, in seconds as opposed to miss. Then it was time to glue them into place. I used plastic glue to get the angle of the dangle just right. Then I would say the only thing left to do was to paint the rim of the base black. But these aeronautica ships come on weird bases, so I'll just say done. The Thunderhawk gunship is the workhorse of the Space Marine chapters. It's an ancient vessel first seen ferrying legions during the Horus Heresy. Now they are revered relics, practically worshipped by their tech marines. Built with the same robust armoring of the Imperial Land Raider, they are deceptively advanced with a powerful machine spirit and some of the most advanced targeting systems in the Empire. When I do freehanding on a regular mini in 28mm scale, I'm working in a 150th scale. It's what I'm used to. But Aeronautica ships are in 8mm scale. 1 200th. It's a whole new thing, and first they're scary. At this scale, I'm recreating the look of something far away, and I think the way to do that is with colors. When you see something from far off, it looks different to how it looks up close. Colors are a little desaturated. An extreme example of this is mountains. The further away, the more blue-gray they look. And I think if I can bring a little of that into my paint job, the more realistic this little ship will be. When I hobby, I can recapture some of that childhood fun. Not in a weird way. It's not literally getting back to Lincoln Logs on Grandma's rug, but play and pretend with way cooler toys than I ever had as a kid. I mean, I have a job and a car now, and well over 10,000 hours of painting experience. Who knows if this model will ever see tabletop time? It might, but I don't need it to. This model is here for me to admire. While this box was in my hands at the checkout counter, my mind was rationalizing the purchase as, oh, I'm getting this for Aeronautica. Well, maybe I'll make a video about it. You know, working in a different scales is good practice. Whereas in reality, the actual logic behind this purchase was, heh heh, spaceship go vroom. And you know what? That's how it should be. The real reason we play these games is to enjoy ourselves, so please don't get hung up on the Games Workshop stock prices, who owns Star Wars Legion this week, or if X-Wing 2.0 is a dead game. Don't treat your hobbies like a job, something to win at or beat. 
If something's making you happy, go for it. Too many things in this world are difficult, challenging, and stressful, and your hobbies shouldn't be. So, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go play with my little spaceship. Bye-bye.